Hi, we're looking still at factoring, and this time we're moving on to a special case, the trinomial case, where we have three terms, or in particular, this is a quadratic. We've talked about that before, we mentioned that term, at least quadratic. It's when you have something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c all equals zero. And the whole thing about a, b, and c, these are just variables. We were waiting for them to be constant. In this case, a is 1, b is 5, c is 6. They could be anything. So we'll look at more cases later. We're sticking for now with the a equal 1 case. You'll see why later, but we have to look at factoring this. And these are a special type of equation that has a nice way you can factor them. And so we have x squared plus 5x plus 6 all equals 0. And whenever you want to factor these, there's actually a nice trick or rule to follow. Is what we're looking for is two numbers that add to equal the middle term and multiply to equal the final term. So we're looking for two numbers that add to equal 5 and multiply to give me 6. Now the thing is, whew, what are these two numbers? The easiest way to start, think of all the numbers, the small numbers at least, that will get you 6. Because numbers that can add up to 5 are limitless. But the numbers that can multiply to give me 6, especially if I'm not considering fractions, then they're pretty limited. So what numbers can add, multiply to give me 6? Well, 1 and 6, 2 and 3, and really that's it. Unless I go into fractions, which we're not going to bother doing. We'll show you another way to solve some of these equations if fractions get involved because at that point factoring is probably more work than it's worth. But which of these would add to give me 5? And we also have to consider that it could be a minus or a plus. So if I wanted to, I could think 1 and 6 multiply to give me 6. And if I had minus 1 plus 6, I'd get plus 5, but minus 1 times 6 will give me minus 6, not plus. So that won't work. How about 2 and 3? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. Ah, we're in business. So why did we need these numbers? That's our nice little answer there. And actually, I'm going to switch colors to make life easy. What do we do? Well, actually, we're done. That's the funny thing. So what we're going to find for all of these is that we can immediately write, remember this is plus 2 and plus 3, x plus 2, x plus 3 equals 0. That's our solution. Just by using this method, using this trick, what two numbers add for that, what two numbers multiply to give us that, they have to be the same numbers of course, by the way. Well, that means we can factor in this form. And if you don't believe me, try expanding it back out. In fact, why don't we do that right now? So x times x x times 3. Now we're using dots for multiplication so we don't get confused why we have all these x's. 2 times x. 2 times 3. Oops. I even just said I'm using dots. Look at that. Equals 0. And again, we're just checking. You can always go back and double check. If I expand this and I don't get what I started with, I got a problem. So this becomes x squared. This is plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. 3x plus 2x would give us 5x, what we started with. Great. So we didn't mess up. Don't let the check mark confuse you. I'm just enthusiastic. Go us. So we've got the equation right. Well, you know what? We don't actually need to have done this. Maybe you'd be asked to do it sometimes, depending if you're on a test or something. But for our purposes, I was just showing you it was okay. Well, we didn't actually finish the question. We factored it. If that's all we were asked to do, that's great. But likely what you were asked to do is solve for x. So let's take this back down here. I guess I shouldn't have drawn a line through that, so you could still read it, but my apologies. So if we still have to solve for x, it's the same trick we've been doing where we set this equal to 0 and this equal to 0. Because at least one of these have to be equal to 0. Because 0 times this would still be 0. 0 times this would still be 0. And 0 times 0 would, of course, be 0. So we can say, well, x plus 2 equals 0. All right, well, we want to solve that. So we subtract 2 from both sides. It's a really ugly looking 2. I'm sorry. But we get x equals minus 2. 
And here we have x plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3 from both sides or x equals minus 3. And as we said before, these are both valid answers. So that's showing how to factor and how to solve for x. And we're going to look at some other cases in a little bit as well. So thank you.